Hi, it's James from Ingvid once again with Test Your English. Are you ready? Today's test is on phrasal verbs. Those naughty words that cause people so many difficulties. And I understand why. You've got a verb and a preposition. And when the verb is by itself, it means something almost completely different than when it's in its phrasal verb form. For example, pick up. Pick means to choose, but when you say to pick up, it means to meet a friend and take them to a restaurant, you pick them up? Crazy, I know. So today, we're going to test your English with phrasal verbs that mean the exact opposite. So I'm going to teach you four pairs of phrasal verbs and how they are opposite and how you can use this English to improve your English so you're like a native speaker. So let's go to the board. And I've noticed E is playing the game himself. Puss out. He's saying, what happened? Do you know what that means? Let's go to the board and play. So question number one. Which phrasal verb means to come to a place that was not planned or expected? Is it end up or start out? Were you able to guess? The answer is end up. Did you get it wrong? Did you get it right? Don't worry. After this segment, we're going to take a, an opportunity to explain what each one means. But you're still playing the game. That would have got you 10 points if you got it right. And if you didn't get it right, don't worry about it. How about the next one? Put on your thinking cap. Which phrasal verb means to accumulate something by putting parts or materials together? And accumulate means to put things together, okay? In case you get confused. So accumulate, all right? So which phrasal verb means to accumulate something by, and that means make it larger by gathering things, by putting parts or materials together? Is it build up or die down? If that's annoying for you, it's annoying for me too. It kills my throat. Anyway, <laughs> is it build up or die down? What did you guess? Did you guess build up? You got yourself 10 points. If you didn't, stick around. All right, question number three. <clears throat> Which phrasal verb means to be conscious? Which phrasal verb means to be conscious? Is it pass out or come to? For 30 points, did you get come to? I hope you did. And if you got zero, I'm glad you're watching this lesson because you've got a lot of education coming up in a second or two. Now, finally, our final question. This will show you can pat yourself on the back if you get this one on all of these correct. Which phrasal verb means to prevent someone from doing something by talking about it Oh, sorry, talking about good reasons for not doing it. <sighs> That's a mouthful. Which phrasal verb means to prevent someone from doing something by talking about good reasons for not doing it? Is it talk out of or <clears throat> talk into? This is a tough one because they're both talk. It's talk out of. <clears throat> so if you did this right, you got 40 points. If not, you need to join me in a second or two. See you on the board. <sighs> wow. These kids don't even appreciate the work I... Uh, hi! Uh, uh, we're back. Game show, that's right. Test your English. Now, think back. What was your score before we went away? Did you get perfect? Mm, don't worry about it, because here I'm going to give you the information you need to understand how these pairs work. Now, if you recall rightly, I told you these were opposites, and I placed them on the board that way, that one is the opposite of the other. Sometimes it's easy because you can see that they have opposite words, as in start or end. But what do they mean? Let's find out. To start out, it means to begin, just as start means the beginning, to move or to act. We usually use this with businesses, when you can say something like, 
I started out with one dollar and I grew a multi-billion dollar business, right? It means we began here and we moved to a certain place. So what does end up mean? It doesn't just mean end. Um, when we talk about phrasal verbs, and I mentioned at the beginning, a verb has a specific meaning, but as soon as you end up a prep, add a preposition, it can slightly change it. In this case, end up means, yes, you got to a certain place or ended there, but it's not what you planned on or expected. Okay? So you could imagine going to, um, going to a, and this happened to me one time, I went to a bar, a popular bar, some friends invited me to, and I didn't know this at the time, but it was a, 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 it's a, a drag show. Maybe you don't know what that is. It's where men can dress up as women and they entertain people, right? Um, so I thought we were going to uh, sit down and have a nice dinner, and I'm all dressed up for it. And they've got, young man, do, 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 and dancing in the middle of the floor. I'm like, I didn't know I was going to end up here. I wouldn't have dressed like this for that. So where I ended up, yes, it was dinner, but not the way I had planned. And that's end up, okay? So the next one we have is build up and die down, okay? So when we talk about building up, it's to accumulate or assemble by putting parts together. Um, some of you guys, I, I don't have it today. I don't have my Batman shirt or the Batman mask. And if you've been with me long enough, you know I love Batman. Well, I have built up a collection of Batman. I probably have a thousand and that's just one section of things I've collected over years, right? So build up to accumulate over time. The opposite of that is to die down, because as something builds up, it gets bigger and bigger. Well, die down means to go smaller and smaller. So, in fact, the crowd was very loud, and then it died down. So it means to go from something larger to something smaller, right? So if it was really windy, whoosh, the wind can die down to nothing. So the opposite of getting more is getting less, to gradually become less strong, all right? So what about these ones, pass out and come to? Well, if you love to drink like I do, and I love a, a nice glass of whiskey, sometimes I drink too much and I pass out. And when I come to, I end up at the weirdest places. <laughs> My bad Scottish, Scottish accents. Thank, thank heavens no Scottish people will watch this video. Um, so when you pass out, it means to suddenly become unconscious. And that's not about alcohol only. A lot of people pass out because they drink too much. So you drink too much, you fall asleep unexpectedly. But you can pass out because it's too hot. Like if you're on a bus and it's very, very hot and they don't take down the windows, someone might pass out beside you. Or, like my mom, my mom, I love you mom, she hates the sight of blood. If she sees blood, she'll pass out, <laughs> right? It means you just lose consciousness, consciousness suddenly and unexpected. So what does come to mean? Well, pass out means that, but come to means to come back to consciousness. Now, you're gonna say, oh, James, I know, when I go to sleep at night, I sleep, and then I come to in the morning. <coughs> Wrong. Just like passing out is unexpected, you come to after being knocked out. That could be from it being too warm, drinking too much, getting punched in the head, right? Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson punches you in the head, you gotta to come to next week. That's right, Michael. I'm making fun of you, but you don't know where I live. <laughs> I shouldn't do that because I hear the man's making a comeback and he looks really good. <laughs> So, to come to is if you get knocked out by something, something makes you fall asleep, or if you drank too much, and it's almost the opposite of pass out, right? Almost. Except we talk about being knocked out. When you pass out, you're not going to be, it's not someone hitting you, right? It's other conditions that make you fall asleep unexpectedly. So, come to, you don't come to in the morning because you didn't fall asleep unexpectedly, did you? You went to bed with the idea of sleeping. So you wake up. Uh, remember that. All right. All right, grasshopper. So <clears throat> after we've done that, let's talk about talk out of and talk into. These are very, very similar. And you might have been able to guess this simply because we got talk out, talk into. And you know out would mean to leave and in means to come into. So when we talk people out of something, we can do it in two ways. You will find most of the dictionaries will say to talk someone from doing something 
and talking about the good reasons not to do it. But you can also talk them out of doing it by telling them the bad things that will happen if they do it, okay? So that's it. So when you talk someone out of something, you prevent them from doing something they wanted to do by talking about either the good reasons not to do it, don't quit school when you're 15. It's going to be very bad and hard for you to get a job in the future, right? And if you don't quit school, you can get a good job. So I've done both negative and positive, but I'm trying to talk you out of doing something. To talk you into something is to get you to do something, right? Many of you have bought cars or clothing that maybe you didn't want, but that salesperson was like, you look just so good in it. You look amazing. I tell you, you gotta, you gotta have it. Your friends are gonna talk about it. You'll be the greatest. You'll be the greatest ever. I promise you. See? They talked you into it, you bought it, and now you're at home regretting it. Talking to a whole bunch of you, aren't I? Mm hmm Okay. So people can talk you into something just as they can talk you out of something. All right? So I've explained the pairs. Now what I want you to do, if, that was, if you understand this, maybe go over the quiz I gave you at the beginning and check to see the answers. And you'll go, oh, that just makes sense now. And clearly it will. Now, this is a class and I consider it a full class that you're being given, so we have to do the bonus section. What's the bonus here? You know, but James, you just taught me pass out and come to. Did I? Did I? Well, the other thing about phrasal verbs, which is most interesting, is that if you have a phrasal verb, or the reason why we as native speakers use it is because it can ha it's a very handy tool. It's like a level. It makes everything go straight. Um, <laughs> what I mean by that is we can use one phrasal verb in several different instances. We don't have to change it and all native speakers understand it. For instance, you can pick up your uh, phone, right? You can pick up a signal, you can pick up a friend. It's like, how can you use that for so many? We know. The same is here. When I said pass out, I told you is to fall unconscious unexpectedly. However, it also means to give something out. In schools, you hear people say, can you please pass out the books or pass out the tests? So don't think that somebody is getting a test and falling asleep unconscious all of a sudden. They might say, can you pass this out, please? And it means to give out. That's another meaning of pass out. And what about come to? This is an interesting one because you'll see native speakers go, oh, okay, um, four, okay. it means to add up to. It means a total, a total. If you put this and this and this, it comes to this. Example, you buy, I don't know, some water, agua, or what is my little cousin saying? Apa. Yes, if you're a Romanian, you know apa is water. So you buy this and this, and then you go to the counter to pay for it, and the guy goes, well, the pan's $3.50, and the water's $2. That comes to $5.50. You're thinking, they're going to come alive, they're unconscious right now. <laughs> no, he's saying if you add this and this, the amount comes to or adds up to this. So if someone says this comes to that, comes to this amount, they're saying if I add this and this, this is the final total. Kind of cool, huh? But that's why you come here. It's not just the lesson, it's the bonus information. Of course, finally, we have my favorite and yours, the homework in which I allow you and give you the opportunity to make millions and millions and millions of points. Yes, and this is going to be a tough one. It's a story about E and I going out. I don't know the last time that happened, but I need you to fill out the story, which I will read, and it will give you for each answer you get correct. Now they're in pairs, so even though there are six spaces, it's a pair. Mm, let me see. But because it's a pair, let's say you can get 2,000 points for each pair you get correct. And that's right, I'm being generous. All right, 2,000 points. So whether you're on Ingvid, the website, or you're on YouTube, or whatever platform you're using, students, if they got the right answer, give them a thumbs up. And for each one thumbs up they get, they'll get 2,000 points. Coolio? I think so. So, E blank. Sorry, I blank, Mr. E blank. What the hell could that be? I don't even know. Going to a bar with me. He blank blank after drinking too much and we blank blank going home. Hmm. 
you will deserve all the points you get if you get this correct, okay? So do that. Make sure you give people the thumbs up, let them know. And uh, you can also write any other phrasal verbs you might find confusing. We can play the phrasal verb game and test your English with it. Anyway, I'm going to get going pretty soon because I'll, otherwise I'll end up being late for my next appointment. So we started out with the game and I'm going to um, give you a little bit of information I want you to take down. So make sure you go to www ing as in English vid as in video dot com to do a quiz. That's right, a further quiz on this to make sure you really understand it. Right? Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And why do I say that? Well, I'm still talking, and it's the end of the video, so you like it because you keep wanting more. So like it. It helps us, and then we can get more videos to you. And subscribe. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to do that right now unless. You've watched two, three, four videos, whether myself or other people like Ronnie or Adam, then subscribe already. You clearly like what we have to offer you, and we want to keep giving it to you. Anyway, as always, thank you very much. You make it all possible, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.